A toy brand I'd never even heard of until very recently, Motomax, have released a new range of James Bond cars this year. The Hong Kong company first announced this wave of models back in April on their YouTube channel. It wasn't until they started to be listed on the 007 store that I became aware of them. As luck would have it, despite Bond merchandise not being easy to find on the high street in my neck of the woods, a store I sometimes pop into in the off chance they're stocking any new Bond cars happen to be stocking the new Motomax range. The salesman in the store even said that he'd chosen to stock them partly due to Corgi's recent poor treatment of shops, which has included getting rid of their visiting salespeople. I picked up a few of these at the time, choosing to research the range further before buying any more. The first of these was a 1 to 18 scale of the BMW motorbike from Tomorrow Never Dies, for the very affordable price of $12.99, taking me back to the time when Corgi models were that cheap. I must admit, the quality of these models, not quite up there with Corgi, but it's still nice to see the new range of cars being produced, particularly at a more affordable price. They also feature the 60th anniversary logo on the box, tying it in nicely with this year's event. I also picked up 1-24 scale models of the 1964 Ford Mustang from Thunderball, the Ford Thunderbird from Die Another Day, and the 1966 VW Beetle from On Her Majesty's Secret Service deciding to focus on the cars not commonly available elsewhere. All of these feature opening doors, bonnet and boot. There are eight cars currently available to buy, all of which are available from the 007 store if you're struggling to find them elsewhere. There are two 1 to 18 scale vehicles, the previously mentioned BMW R1200C motorbike and the Chevy Bel Air from Dr. No, a car that hasn't featured that much in official Bond car releases. The bigger scale of the Bel Air means it's a little more pricey, at around £70, but still cheap for a model of its size. Both of these models come on a plinth, detailing the model of the car. The rest of the cars in the collection are 1 to 24 scale, priced at around £25, and include several Ford Mustangs. The convertible model from Goldfinger that Bond unleashes his tyre slashes on, the Thunderball variety already seen, and the red Mustang from Diamonds Are Forever. Sticking with the Ford theme, and as seen previously, the Thunderbird from Dine of the Day features, and a car of minimal screen time, the white VW Beetle from Under Majesty's Secret Service is also included. And of course, no set would be complete without an Aston Martin DB5. Some further models have started to appear online, having been released in quarter 4 of 2022 and quarter 1 of 2023, apparently not fitting into either of the previously released scales, a 5-inch model of the double-decker bus from Live and Let Die has been released and appears to be presented on a plinth. There's also a range of 1-64 to scale diorama models. One features the bus again, this time having the top half separated from the bottom as per the film. Another features the Diamonds Ford Mustang mounting the ramp to fit down the tight alleyway. And finally, the AMC Hornet appears just prior to its impressive corkscrew jump. These look similar to the approach taken by the James Bond car collection from a few years back. Some model sites online list two further releases, but they're currently listed as being unavailable or only available for pre-order. One is the Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor from Casino Royale, and the other, which I haven't really seen a model form outside of Corgi, and one I'd be really keen on getting, is the Moonraker Space Shuttle, listed as being 1 to 300 scale. I reached out to the company to get further information about these, but they did not reply. I also contacted the contact involved in US sales, who sent me a spreadsheet of the confirmed releases, and these were not listed. These two models weren't featured in the company's launch video earlier in the year, so they may be intended for a future wave, or might have been cancelled. Either way, I'll be eagerly anticipating future releases from this company, and I'm keen to see where they go next with the collection.